Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the charts for Bitcoin to see what's been recently going on with the price action and what I would expect to happen next. As I get into this video if you find it useful and informative hit the like button. I really do appreciate that if you happen to be new to the channel then why not go ahead and subscribe. Tap the bell, select all notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. If you have not yet joined us in Discord, links in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24-7. It's completely free and I don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find on down there. So why not go ahead and check it out today? Okay, guys, let's get into this, right? So uh, here we have Bitcoin paired up with USDT. This is our hourly chart to start with. I'm just going to kind of walk you through what I'm thinking and what is uh, what I think is the most probable outcome here uh, based on everything that we've seen in terms of all of this structure. Um, so... Basically, if I just were to zoom out ever so slightly, you can see that we were tracking this five wave move down. This actually is our wave three. OK, and um, if I bring this up actually into our four hourly, just bring this out, you can kind of see we've got this this structure here. Right. And uh, it is a five wave move inside wave one, uh, a three wave move inside wave two, a five wave move inside wave three. And we're looking for a three wave move inside wave four before we have another five wave move down. OK, so just to kind of understand the structure it is a five, three, five, three, five that we're looking for. However, this fourth wave is usually going to be a complicated one. It has been um, pretty volatile to say uh, the least, but also relatively boring. Right. We haven't seen any huge movements up, no huge movements down um, and it has been quite frustrating at one point we could actually take a look at this and we could articulate this was going to go in both directions we could see it going up and we could also see it going down which is why I put this impulsive trigger here at uh, $27,125 however since we've moved up so much this can actually now come off okay so we know that this is no longer uh, a move down but instead we should be thinking about a move on up now inside here we can see that we have got a five wave move okay so pretty standard stuff here and we should look for now for some kind of three wave move inside right so we should be seeing some kind of abc structure just here before we have another five wave moves up um, i think what we're ending up with here is some kind of three three five um so if i were to take this we could basically say this is our first set of three waves okay then we end up with uh, what is potentially uh, an interesting set of corrections just up here and it might actually be that we have to do it like this to make it as simple as possible for the point of this video but do understand that there's a lot of subwave counting going on inside of these moves okay so if that is our first three wave move then we would have another three wave move just here with again a bunch of subwave moves in themselves and then at this point here we might find ourselves with some kind of uh you know five wave structure just going up here this basically would make the whole thing a three three five inside of our uh, fourth wave which would actually then be constituted as a three wave move as in there's three there's three there's five and that's a total of three waves and okay across the entire wave four and um, so i don't want to kind of confuse anyone too much um but essentially i think that is what is going on here with this pattern here now this this pattern here could just be a, a zigzag in the end okay and it, it could just basically be your a b and c pattern going up there that, to that effect right that's also a possibility and um, so it's just one that we have to kind of keep an eye on here um a three three five would be all uh, would be also something that we can kind of keep an eye on um, as well so i think essentially we are looking to move on up i've got this kind of scoped out about thirty three thousand five hundred uh, at the moment however it could go higher it could come down ever so slightly lower than that um but one thing that i am confident on uh, totally is that we are more than likely going to be pulling down into this fifth wave low on a slightly larger time scale so if we start thinking about you know where we are in a couple of weeks time from now we want to be heading down towards twenty two thousand nine hundred dollars okay and um, so as i bring this up into our four hourly chart and we can kind of bring this back down you can see twenty two thousand nine hundred and sixty seven dollars is the area that i think is the most probable for this fifth wave however the subwave counts are going to be the one that actually determine how low this thing is likely to go um you know this is a guide at the moment and if we get overextended waves we could see this come down lower so we're just going to keep a little bit of an eye on that and um, but the structure is there and essentially if i zoom out even further okay we can actually then take a look at this entire structure as one big corrective play um, i've put the third wave up here with this as a fourth wave low but again we could also articulate that this was our third wave and this was our fourth wave as you can kind of see here with wave four being there and then wave five could be here uh, and it would be up to an end alternatively i have this as a wave three um, and uh, this here should be our wave five okay so that actually completes our wave three and then we're moving down into this wave four 
uh, before we move up into a final wave five. Okay, so lots of things to think about, lots of kind of uh, directional moves going on, um, but the structure is definitely there. Now, as I come up into our daily, and we bring this back out, um, and the reason why I don't want to call it a bear market is that we're still inside a very um, bull like structure okay now i know we can read it multiple different ways uh and it's very very rare but you could actually have that fifth wave up here at the high of sixty nine thousand dollars it's possible um but it is incredibly rare it doesn't usually happen that way it doesn't mean that it isn't the case it's just very very rare and you wouldn't normally expect to see that kind of thing instead what you've actually got here is potentially um you know a fourth wave correction and a fifth wave high uh, inside of our third wave and now we're pulling down into this last very complex corrective fourth wave before we get that final surge up. Now, this aligns very much to the bigger macro view of the timelines of events. Uh, we cannot be in a bear market um, for multiple years, right? For all of history, all of Bitcoin history, okay, which isn't much, um, but all of Bitcoin history. I'll bring this up into our weekly uh, the bear markets lasted no more than one year one month okay so um, a lot of people get this confused they communicate incorrect information to to retail investors on YouTube or Twitter or whatever uh, the bear market low happens usually within one year so as you can see here you've got four, 413 days to go from all-time high to bear market low um, that was 2013 through to 2015 right um, over this side you have 364 days from all, 2017 all-time high to the 2018 bear market low okay and what people are confusing you about is there's a grind to the upside that takes time okay this is 750 odd days um, and again over here though it was actually quite sharp we actually rose up and if it wasn't for that pandemic crash i don't think you would have actually have seen uh, this last 700 days at all okay um, but do understand that you're not going down during those 700 days you're actually slowly grinding your way back up um, and you're seeing significant gains because you were able to accumulate at that bear market low why am i mentioning this now well i'm mentioning this now because we've been going down here for quite some time so far um, and if i grab hold of this from the all-time high to where we are right now we're about 100 and um, pretty much actually yeah about just short of 200 days right just short of 200 days into this thing and uh, you know it's possible that within the next few um kind of days and weeks we're basically going to start to see this thing bottom out if we take a look at the reduction in time that is taken from the 413 days to 360 days uh, are we actually just talking about a couple more months being down here and then bam uh, bottom comes on in now it's really hard to obviously get the timing right and on the market and all of that kind of stuff we talk about this all the time um and you know the other things that we've got to bear in mind actually if i just stay on this one for a second here uh, and i go ahead and just throw on the simple moving average here okay this is actually the target of what we're looking for and um, so historically speaking the bear market low has come down and tested the 200 simple moving average um, so this puts us down at about twenty two thousand dollars now i'm not saying that necessarily we're going to come down right away we could take weeks before we come down to this 200 moving average but my target still remains twenty two thousand nine hundred right um, and that basically comes in line with our 200 simple moving average as we have seen um, previously, if I actually go ahead and see over here in 2013 and 15 bear market down here, right, you can see that we're resting on this simple 200 moving average so over here as well in 2018. Um, and now we're obviously waiting for that to come back down. Now, I've obviously spoke about how I'm expecting June to kind of hopefully come down into this area. I could be completely wrong on that. Timing is not my forte. I'm not going to get the timing of the market right. What I am going to be able to do is say that this is going to be the most uh, this is the most probable area for retracement. This is the most probable place that I think we are likely to reverse from, for example. Uh, and that's going to be on this uh, 200 simple moving average. And it's going to be about 22,900 in my opinion. Um, of course, we can go a little bit further. Maybe the SMA is not what you want to look at. Maybe it's an EMA and the EMA tells us a very similar thing. Uh, we close below the 20 EMA and we come down to the 50 uh, EMA, okay? But this time, if we actually take a look at this, you close below 
the uh, 50 EMA. Now, this is not a good indication necessarily of the exact areas that you're going to be watching out for, and but it can, can tell that we're not currently closing below this EMA just yet, so we have to come on down. And this is again something that goes way back into 2015 as well, 2018, and obviously where we are right now. And these scenarios and these setups have been here before as well. Okay, so what we're looking for, and I think what we're going to see is a very sharp um, reversal, okay, very much like we saw in 2019. We just turn those EMAs off for a sec, okay? So um, essentially what I'm thinking is that we're going to come down and within a very short period of time uh, of that bear market low, uh, we are going to see a very, very, very rapid increase in Bitcoin's price. And the reason for this is the shrinkage of supply on the exchanges. Now, um, Glassnode is going to be really good at that, kind of giving us a bit of an indication as to kind of what's going on with exchanges. So if we come over to Glassnode here, you can see that the, uh, if I actually, this is the balance of Bitcoin on all exchanges. If I just zoom this out, let me just go back into the 2018 scenario just over here and expand it all the way out. You can see that in 2018 and the bear market lows, and even in 2019, as price was going up, um, the Bitcoin on exchanges was just increasing. Um, and even during this, um, this supply increase to the exchanges, we still saw Bitcoin rapidly increase in value, right? Um, and at the same time as this, um, yeah, the price was going up, right? As, as that, that was uh, increasing. Now, what we've got now is different uh, in the sense that we have a decrease in uh, Bitcoin, right? So we have a shock to the supply. And as that demand comes in, I think we're going to see an even greater surge to the upside than we had seen previously. This is actually then going to take us up into our next all-time high before we actually come into another Bitcoin uh, bear market before we get to the Bitcoin halving event because the Bitcoin halving event is 665 days away. Now, it is possible that that doesn't happen and we actually just have a slow grind, but never before in Bitcoin's history have we been significantly higher than the previous all-time high and before the Bitcoin halving event. I'm not saying that the Bitcoin halving event is actually meaningful in any way. Uh, I don't think it's actually going to actually have that much more of an impact. And if we take a look at all the previous Bitcoin halving events, um, you know, there's several things that need to be taken into consideration, right? The bull run for Bitcoin started uh, in G uh, January of 2019. Yeah. Um, yet the Bitcoin halving event did not happen until after the pandemic crash, right? So you know, there's a couple of things here, right? It didn't require the Bitcoin halving event to have this massive surge to the upside, right? Um, and this goes from the bear market low all the way up here at a 332% move. Okay, so very, very significant gains were made there. Um, and obviously the pandemic crash was going to have a reversal regardless, just because that was exactly what was going to happen considering the amount of bleeding that happened. You cannot go down that much in one straight line without significant surge to the upside. Now, coinciding that pandemic crash with a Bitcoin halving event just kept made a, you know compounded the issue. It got into the press and obviously the FOMO really kicked in and it took it up into significant highs. But it wasn't quick. It wasn't easy. Again, it was something that we slowly saw during 2020. It wasn't really until 2021, uh, practically a year after the Bitcoin halving event that we actually saw saw a really good run to the upside uh, coming in. And um, so I do want to kind of say that Bitcoin halving event, I don't think it's a huge catalyst, but it is something that we should be mindful of. Um, and again, I would imagine this will happen after um, with bull run has actually started. Um, so it'll be interesting to kind of see how that kind of runs. Um, I'm not expecting a slow grind though, uh, essentially here. Um, so the next thing I just want to kind of talk about is we have got more inflows and outflows at the moment. And um, so we actually, this is minor stuff though, but it, we have got it there. So we should just know that there's a few thousand more Bitcoin coming onto the exchanges, right? So um, over the last few days, it's been you know, sporadic. We've sometimes had more leaving than going on, sometimes more coming on than going off. So yesterday we had more coming on at 59,000. And I think our outflows yesterday uh, were coming in at 43,000. So you're not huge amounts, um, but there's a significant amount of Bitcoin, I guess, to a degree. Um, ultimately, the net difference over um, the uh, 2022 so far is that more Bitcoin has left exchanges. A lot more Bitcoin has left exchanges um, than has gone on. And again, this is notable from the decrease in um, Bitcoin on the exchanges, right? A small surge upwards as the whales have been uh, moving money around or moving Bitcoin around. Uh, here we can take a look at anyone owning 1000 BTC or more, and we can see that there, this is actually starting to stay, stabilize a little bit. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens next. There are the sharks in the space. Uh, they're actually been accumulating still. Nothing really to note here, other than the fact that uh, anyone holding more than 100 BTC uh, have been on the increase. They haven't really been shaking out of the market too much. Uh, 10 uh, Bitcoin 
going on more, again, a nice steady increase. So you can see here how um, you know these dolphins, sharks, and whales are actually accumulating, okay, at the expense of the retail investor. Um, so just keep a, a close eye on things, guys. I, you know, there's a lot of information available to us if we understand how to read this um, information, and, and we should be confident in knowing where we are heading as we come down lower towards this bear market low. And uh, as a result of this, I do think we're going to be finding ourselves with some fantastic opportunities to dollar cost average into projects um, right back down at these low points that we have, uh, you know, that we have only seen a handful of times beforehand okay so some fantastic opportunities do lie ahead guys i'm going to leave the video there if you found this useful and informative hit the like button i really do appreciate that if you happen to be new to the channel then why not go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at cheeky crypto with all that said done out of the way i hope everyone has a fantastic day and i'll catch you all in the next one